To uh, perform a tantric healing, ideally the body of the client is already purified and uh, will have a good quality of the, of the meridians and of the nadis so the energy can flow freely. Um, because if the energy is stimulated and the energy cannot flow freely, then the person will become very aware of all their uh, blockages, all their emotional traumas. And it can become, instead of a pleasurable experience, a rather unpleasant experience, where the person will go into a struggle with their blockages, with their problems. So it's always best to try to at least work with the client as much as possible to purify their energy body before doing a tantric session. It can help to meditate, for instance, or do some grounding exercises uh, to get as good a state as possible. So, uh, in this case, unfortunately, the client is not in an optimal state, but I will at least demonstrate the different steps. First thing is to work on the invitation. Um, the spirit and the body have to become as united as possible, has to become as one as possible. Because in this state, um, also the spirit is able to control the body. If the spirit is like off doing its own thing or has become disinterested in its own incarnation, um, it will often result in a lot of physical problems and mental problems because there's no harmonizing force guiding the energies of the body. So this is actually the first part or the first stage of the Tantra, creating a union between the spirit and the body. There are two spots which are very important to stimulate in this stage. We have the ankles. And we discussed earlier the importance of the ankle chakras. When working with Tantric touch, it's very much about awareness. Not about just being interested in the physical body, wanting to be in touch with the physical body, but much more importantly that the physical body is just a means to get in touch with all the subtle energies, with the spirit. So my interest has to go beyond what I'm sensing on a physical level, even beyond what I'm sensing on an energy level, but really going into a search for her essence. But at the same time, I'm looking for her essence. I'm also giving physical body and the energy bodies that they need, that they desire. This is very much about releasing stress. And giving support. its body into the present situation where it can feel loved and accepted. If it goes well, then you should start noticing a kind of a golden glow, a very harmonious energy starting to come from the body of your client to where your hands are. This is indicating that the spirit is also starting to enter the body more deeply. Now, once this spot more or less okay, 
and we will move to the next stage of the invitation. This is really, you could say, showing that there's support here. The next stage is also more about, uh, you could say, admiration, about uh, not just inviting the spirit, but for me as a, a healer, also regarding the spirit, becoming aware of its power, of its nature, of its potential. And you could say like looking at the spirit through the eyes of a lover. So that the spirit can also become aware of its own light, of its own qualities. And the spirit itself is still in a passive state. But it is in a way looking in the mirror through you. Like what am I within this body? And to do that, we move to the groin area. There's a lot of power here, start at the Hara point. This is also very much about you know, connecting the spirit with its own power. So that the spirit will take control over the powers of the body. Also important exercises if you're working with, for instance, uh, a person who has fertility problems. It's by the spirit making contact with the Hara point, the quality of the life force improves. And to conceive, it is not just the amount of the life force which needs to be sufficient, but also the quality of the life force which needs to be sufficient. Ultimately, the effect should be similar to what we had with the ankles, so that this area starts to radiate the golden energy, find the presence of the spirit. See the energy here is still a little bit blocked because the quality of the meridians is not quite what you would like it to be yet. But even though the circulation is not what it should be, we're getting more and more presence here. So now that the spirit has been invited into the body and become more connected with its own power, 
we have to invite it to take control over the incarnation. So the spirit has to in a way, remember its past, the reason for being here. And we do this by stimulating the energy channels leading up towards the shoulders, towards the center of man manifestation. So you could say we're cheering on the spirit, like go on and work on yourself, use your power, manifest yourself, show yourself, not just in the body, but also in your actions. Let not just your body reflect your being, but also let your actions reflect your being. So we will stimulate the flanks. Try to touch in a way that you're not only touching the body, but also looking for the energy and the spirit. But eventually it will come to you. It will follow the contact which you've already established. It's often so important in this stage also to have a kind of a an energizing impulse like uh, curiosity or um, enjoyment. So you're offering the spirit in a way a positive sensation. Why should you be here? Why should you be active in your body? Well, because it can be enjoyable. Because you can grow and develop yourself experience something new. So this is very much a stage of really not so much supporting the spirit but seducing the spirit. To use the opportunity created for itself. So then we move further up to the chest and shoulder area. So with men the breasts are less developed and most of the energy resides in the shoulders. Um, with women it's a little bit opposite. There's less energy in the shoulders, more energy in the breasts. So here we want uh, that the energy is activated. This is really about allowing the person to release the energy, to allow it to flow outward either through the breasts or through the shoulder. important also to have a proper attitude uh, towards this because from the perspective of the spirit all manifestation, every action is just a game uh, just like we have our little uh, board games we can play for entertainment to spend an hour or two similarly from the perspective of the spirit uh, having a life and doing things with the body like um, uh, can be a 
a very similar experience to playing a board game. The spirit itself is eternal uh, and even during an incarnation it needs not always be there full time. But it can just come in and be active for a while and try out some new things. So it is a playful entertainment energy which you want to put here. I'm in a way saying to the spirit, like, okay, come on, let's play together, let's do something with this body, let's experiment. But it's not about morality or things like this, it's just about using the opportunity. that my movements are a little bit quicker here than they were at the legs because the energy should also be flowing more quickly higher in the body The spirit is more activated, we can try to bring the spirit into a state of balance. Um, because ultimately, the effect the spirit will have on the body uh, will de depend on the state of the spirit itself. If the spirit is in a very troubled, anguished state, also the body will reflect that state. So now comes the more uh, tricky part, and that's not just getting the spirit to come here actually getting the spirit to transform itself and this is really the essence of Tantra not just inviting the spirit or getting the spirit to use the body but also getting the spirit to have a growth experience a transformational experience so for that it is of course necessary to have a goal or purpose uh, because the spirit has to be interested enough to to go into such a transformation, it has to know what to do, how to do it, when to do it. But if we have that purpose, we can help support that transformation by working on the heart and the neck. The neck is a very important connection, of course, between the higher impulses, which are received from the head and the rest of the body, and the heart is very much a connection to the divine spark. So by getting the spirit, even while it is in the body, to connect to its divine self and to maintain its connection to higher worlds, it can be in the body without being frustrated so much by the body. And it will be able to remain in the body for longer without getting too frustrated by the limitations of the body. And ultimately, by the spirit staying in the body longer, the body will also grow more strong, more healthy, into, into a more pure and perfect reflection of the nature of the spirit. So, here we work. On helping the spirit to bring whatever light it is connected to, with it into the body. So that the spirit will be in a state of goodness. Because if this last part is not done, then the spirit gets very identified with the body. But yeah, without the lighter impulses, which the spirit is used to, the spirit can actually grow more dark because the world around it is of a lower vibration than the spirit. So it is very possible for a person to lose their light if they become too addicted to yeah, the physical experiences or the power of having a manifested body. This is a very important
important stage to make it safe for the spirit. to lose the light in the darkness of the incarnated world. But your hands should be radiating that light, helping the spirit to connect to the world of light through you. At the beginning, when the light and the balance and harmony in the spirit are increasing, it will be able to access its own light in the heart the crown chakra. And now we have achieved a quite decent union between body and spirit. And now that we have this, we can start focusing on the problems which we want to heal, which can be both of a physical nature and also of a more energetical nature. And to do so, we have to guide the spirit to the problem area. And in this case, it will be the prana tube. If we look at this specific case and try to follow the energy in the prana tube, we will find that here there is quite a good connection between the first and the second chakra. Then it becomes less good, there is really a weakening, it becomes more shallow, and here it starts to get normal again, so roughly this whole area. It's suboptimal, it's not as good as it should be. As I've said before, this is often the result of more programming. Um, of people who are, in a way, um, not accepting um, things like um, the impulses coming from the from the lower chakra, so they're not really accepting uh, in a normal way um, sexuality, uh, desire, um, um, hunger, greed, and if they have a very uh, negative relationship with these impulses, it often leads to a false morality. So people don't want something or cannot accept something and by their uh, animosity uh, to in a way say like I'm not a person who is evil or uh, uh, renouncing it often these impulses which they are blocking they will be considered as evil or uh, immoral or uh, wrong or unhealthy or unspiritual so the uh, primary blockage will become rationalized by the higher chakras and this is also what many religions actually do they in a way give power to the person's tyranny over themselves like they're unaccepting of their own nature of their own being and yeah often cultural systems and religious systems will codify um, this you know, war against oneself and Tantra is not about this it's not about fighting with yourself with judging yourself 
It's about guiding yourself. And it is about respecting the power, realizing that it can overpower you if your spirit is too strong, if your awareness is too strong. And working now with this area, it's in a way you're teaching the spirit to take these impulses by the hand and slowly guide them along the proper path. This is why we need the spirit to be as active and as strong as possible, because only the spirit can create new paths, can create new habits for these energies to follow. Because indeed, if these lower energies rise too quickly and uncontrolled, they will overwhelm the higher chakras, they will obscure the light with their lower vibrations. But if these impulses rise more slowly, more under control of the spirit, then they will transform as they rise. And they will not form a threat to the Holy Spirit, they will not blot out the contact with the Divine, uh, with your own spirit, with your own heart anymore. But now it is the case. So. In a way the person is right, because there is a real danger of losing the connection with the higher world. So yes, it can be considered a sin, but it is only a sin because it is indeed blocking out that connection. And if you can work with the same energy without losing your connection, then it is no longer a sin. Then it is just sexuality or uh, a desire or an interest. So it's a very subtle line whether something is sinful or not and ultimately it is not um, the act itself which is sinful, it is the lack of control which is sinful, it is the surrender of a higher energy to a lower energy which is sinful. Feel a ball of light burning present of the spirit. Help it to move up along the prana channel. Maris will come up quickly. feeling now is that many energies are in a way going back because also the spirit is thinking that it does not have uh, the ability to refine them because every energy can exist in lower and in higher vibrations but also the life force uh, the body has to be able to transform lower vibrations into higher vibrations but if the machinery is not there then the person cannot yeah, in a way, climb the ladder because there's a couple of rungs missing. So there are now some impulses which can be raised to higher levels, but there are also some impulses where in a way, the machinery is not there yet to reach the higher levels. And this is of course also in the process of spiritual development, teaching yourself how to elevate your own energy, how to turn a heavy, dark, disruptive energy into a positive energy, how to work with transformation. So now the spirit is in way engaging what its own transformative abilities are and if it can enhance its own transformative ability. So because of these limitations, limited spiritual development, there is a relatively small amount of energy which was first blocked which can now be allowed to rise, let's say about 20%, uh, the other 80% uh, 
the spirit judges should remain um, yeah a little bit in the lower centers because the higher centers would be disturbed by their impulses but it's a temporary thing so you should now work together with the spirit in creating more ability for transforming these energies and also trying to convince the spirit that it might be good to put the right lessons and teachers and events on its path for it to learn how to work with these energies, how to transform them, how to have good examples of people who can work with these impulses in a way which is not darkening them. So, and as I'm working here, like the creative impulses from the legs and the pelvic area are rising up to form more of a transformative machinery, mainly also to protect the heart. But lower impulses should rise to the heart, so that the heart can become aware of them, the heart can ultimately judge them. But what we find here is that even before they reach the heart, uh, they get blocked because the heart would become overwhelmed by them. And then the heart yeah, go into a state of, um, yeah, um, of ignorance, of unable to see what is going on, uh, would lose control. And this is of course not the goal. So then this has to be refined enough for the consciousness which resides in the heart to to work with them. This is kind of like the level of energy which is required. That's all these impulses coming from the lower chakras reach such a level of purity that they're no longer disturbing the heart chakra, no longer blocking the heart chakra, so that the sense of love, of connection, of harmony cannot be overcome. So possible to stimulate the heart directly. That its ability to withstand these lower impulses and to control them, to judge them, because it's very much about self-judgment, is also strong enough. And what we find here is also that the self-judgment system is not working very well. So it is good to invite the spirit to have a look at it. Because the problem here is that it is too black and white. It is right or it is wrong. It is light or it is dark. There is no real compassion here. No love, regardless of for dark, you know, um, gentleness towards the self. This makes it hard for the integration process. So I hope this has given some insight as to how to perform a tantric healing. Good luck.